told what you could see, you could see some history of our country. For example, when Buenos Aires was founded and our independence process in the 18th century. Then, he did hear some videos about our culture. I hope you like them. Bye! Retrace my lips, erase your touch, it's all too much for me. Blow away like smoke in air, how can you die carelessly? All love is six feet. In the 16th century, Charles V, King of Spain, gave Pedro de Mendoza the title of Governor General of the Rio de la Plata. This means that he could start a public enterprise in America. That is why he started his trip toward this land. He disembarked here in the year 1536 with an expedition. They built a fort where there was also a port. He named this Nuestra Señora Santa Maria del Buen Aire. This settlement soon fell victim to local aborigines and lack of supplies, and the survivors had to retreat up the Pana River to the fortified settlement of Asuncion, now capital city of Paraguay. Nearly 50 years later, Juan de Garay led a better expedition back to the site, and there, neither the port of Santa Maria del Buen Aire, at the mouth of the Riachuelo River, he founded the city, which he called Ciudad de Trinidad, City of Trinidad on May 29th, 1580. Huge pieces of land were given to members of the expedition where they began to grow crops and have animals. Most of these animals had been left by Pedro de Mendoza's party and for about two centuries, Buenos Aires grew slowly. It was a big port, but it was far away from main cities of the Viceroyalty. In 1810, Argentina was not actually a country, it was a vice royalty. This means that Argentina was ruled by Spain and had a repre representative, the Viceroy. He was Cisneros at that time. The vice royalty was called Vice Royalty of the River Plate. Our independence movement began, in fact, in 86, when the British tried to attack Buenos Aires. We were able to repel them and we started feeling strong. But it was also important as everywhere in Spanish America, the invasion of Napoleon in Spain. Napoleon replaced his brother Joseph Bonaparte on the throne of Spain and exiled Fernand VII, the real king. Spain was under the control of France, but we didn't want to be controlled by France, so we started meeting in secret groups to decide where to be independent. In this way, we were showing our loyalty to the king. In 1810, we asked the authorities for an open cabildo. The cabildo was a Spanish institution which had existed in all the colonies since the 16th century. Its powers were very limited, but it was the only body that had given the members of the colonies experience in self-government. In emergencies, it was turned into an open cabildo, a kind of town meeting, where important members of the community met to discuss what problems they had. On May 25th, the Cabildo established an autonomous government to control the Viceroyalty in the name of King Ferdinand VII until he could, he could come back to power. It was our first patriotic government. In Tucumán, on July 9, 1816, Argentina was declared an independent country from Spain. But how did this happen?
As you remember, on May the 25th, 1810, an autonomous government was established in Buenos Aires on behalf of Ferdinand VII. But when Ferdinand was restored to power in 1814, he was virtually powerless. Spain remained under some control of France. As a result of this, a group of the most important people met at San Miguel de Tucumán. They declared the independence of the United Provinces of South America, which is still today one of the legal names of the Argentine Republic. The independence was declared in the Casa de Tucumán, located in San Miguel de Tucumán, capital city of the province of Tucumán. This city is 1,200 kilometers away from Buenos Aires. This is like going from Dhaka to Agra in India. But have you been wondering why Tucumán? Because it was the center of the United Provinces of South America and the place was the crossroad between all the provinces. Twenty-nine deputies were in charge of organizing the Declaration of Independence. The most important were the President, Francisco Narciso de la Prida, and the Vice President, Mariano Boedo. The deputies who signed this declaration were from almost every province of the Viceroyalty of River Plate, except from the ones from Alto Peru, now Bolivia, and the ones from the Banda Oriental, now Uruguay, due to political conflict. First, we must know that the creation of the flag is attributed to Manuel Belgrano, who made a flag in early 1812 using the colors white and blue according to those of the already official cookade, but it is unknown the intensity of the light blue color and which it was his design. The first Argentinian flag consists of a blue box twin to the white box of equal size. Nick gradually modified the design of the horizontal belts because sometimes the flag were of disproportionate size and had to be defined in different ways. And now, generally, the one that is made up of three horizontal stripes is used. The two upper ones of color of blue color and the central one of white. Also in the middle is the sun of May or Inca sun. This represents the May Revolution and the Inca Sun God, Inti. It is a figurative sun with a human face, yellow gold and with 32 rays. Argentina is located in South America. There are 23 provinces. Our capital city is Buenos Aires. Argentina is bordered by Bolivia, Paraguay, Chile, Brazil and Uruguay. It is the eighth largest, largest country in the world. Due to its great latitudinal development, Argentina has the three types of climate, cold in the south, warm in the center, and hot in the north. At the west, next to Chile, we can find the Andes Mountains. We can also find a lot of biomes, such as rainforest in the northeast, the fertile grassland of the central Pampas in the center, the glaciers at the south, and much more. The eastern part is next to the Argentinian Sea. In Misiones, in the north, we can find one of the wonders of the world, the Iguazú Falls. Argentina is the closest country to the South Pole. On 1942, the civil flower was officially declared as a national symbol. This red flower belongs from a tree whose branches have thorns. Uh, and this flower it has its own legend that it was made by the original people from America. 
we are going to talk about food because we want you to know more about our traditional food like empanadas that we have been enjoying since the time of the colony. To make empanadas you first have to cut vegetables such as onions and sweet peppers. Then you have to place them on a cooking pot and cook them until you can see that the onions are turn turning yellowish or clear. Once the vegetables are cooked, you have to add the meat, around 1 kilo of meat per every kilo of onions. Cook it until all the meat turns brown. You can also add boiled eggs if you want to. Then leave the filling to lower its temperature, so you can feel a special dough for empanadas. When you fill it, you close it with the help of some water to stick it and close it in a special way called repulgue. After that, after that you place the raw empanadas in the oven and cook them until the dough turns yellowish. Then you can eat them. <laughs> 